Hey everybody, welcome to the She Rocks Awards virtual red carpet. Today I am completely stoked to chat with 2022 She Rocks honoree, Grammy nominated singer songwriter Meredith Brooks. You got a long resume. You can add She Rocks honoree to that resume. Congratulations, Meredith. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Love your hair. Nice to meet you virtually. I love your hair as well. I know we were like zhuzhing up for the, the press conference that's happening and I'm excited to see the glam when we meet in person on June 2nd at the actual awards in Anaheim. How does it feel to, obviously, like I said, you've had many um, career accolades, but how does it feel to get this special honor? It, it was a surprise to be honest. I, um, you know, we're gearing up for the um, 25th anniversary of of bitch yay, uh -huh. right? and we had the 25th anniversary of the whole release of blurring the edges um just two days ago and so um i got a call or i should say yeah a call and an email from from bonnie and and kim um garner um from access tv and they're like we'd like to make you an honorary what do you think and i'm like for what and they're like trailblazer and i'm like yep I, I kicked I kicked a few doors. That's for sure. <laughs> you absolutely do. You totally deserve this award. And like I said, you've been nominated for Grammys. You've had lots of career highs. But what do you think is special about this event and this honor? Well, first off, OK, I never used to look at myself as like, oh, I'm a woman out there doing a, something special or different. It really wasn't until I got to Los Angeles that, that I was like, I'm in a really tough competitive guy's world like it didn't really hit me now that I've been in the business for you know 35 years or probably even more since I was 11 wow. um, to see something like this happen I, I never had anything like this and I'm really excited that that all these women are coming together and I, I'm sure there's going to be men there too because I know my son and my husband are going to be there and they're both in the business, so it really is in our blood, I guess. They're on tour right now with Avril, so I'm, a, okay. I'm like, give me back my my family, <laughs> and we're going to be um, all there. And I'm going to look around the room and see women I have worked with, and been with, and mentored, and I'm I'm hoping I can keep it together. To be honest. Oh, it's going to be a really special night. Well, as you mentioned, it's the 25th anniversary of Bitch and Blurring the Edges, but you were in the business before that. It took a while for you to get that big break. And we're talking about working with women. And last year, the Go-Go's were inducted into I the know. She Rocks and Charlotte Caffey's obviously the Go-Go's. And you were in this super group, the Graces with Charlotte. Well, I remember when Bitch came out, I'm like, that's Meredith Brooks from the Graces because I love that song, Lay Down Your Arms. That was like on 120 minutes back in the day. So tell me a little bit about how you kind of, you know, you, you were not an overnight success story. You had that and you were you were working, you were grinding for a while. Well, no. Yeah, I, I actually came from the Northwest, <clears throat> you know, days of, you know, I mean, I remember when Nirvana was just beating around like I was beating around. We were all like beating around at the same time. And <clears throat> I came back down to Portland for a little bit um, on my way to L.A. and somehow kind of got stuck there for a while. And then and then came down to LA and I was in a club and I gave myself one year. I was like, okay, I'm here for one year. I went down there with, I think $400 and I thought that was gonna be enough to last. Well, of course I was sleeping on couches and doing the whole, the whole thing. And <clears throat> I was in this club and Charlotte walked in. She's like, yeah, you, you wanna be my band? I'm like, sure, why not? Like, that's <laughs> awesome. And I was in the graces and it was, it was, I just saw a video of us the other night I'm like, what an incredible band like it was really good. So good and I, I I guess when you're in things you don't know until you look back and I was thinking that was a re really good band there's somebody texted me one day I don't even know who it was said one of the producers or something said want to want to get everybody back together again I'm thinking you know everything's a yes these days because 99% of everything doesn't really happen so you say yes to 100% of everything well, it's interesting because that was that song Lay Down Your Arms was, you know, a good size hit. I remember seeing on MTV a lot and stuff, but then it kind of I kind of thought the graces were going to really take off. And then, you know, what happened, it, it kind of like, you know, you had that kind of, as you say, foot in the door, but it didn't totally kick down the door for you. No. Well, and also, I think that was kind of a I think that might have I don't remember, but it might have been the summer that the Go-Go's did a reunion tour. Mm -hmm. You know, you just I don't even remember all the things that happened after that, but. 
there was so many things going on. Charlotte always had things going on. Gogo's always had things going on. Belinda always had things going on. So I think the Graces tried, but it there were always a lot of things going on. You know, so, so it wasn't like the the original group. Maybe right. if it had been, we would have continued for a long time. What club was it, and what was it about you that? what you had this Hollywood story that she just walked in and was like you oh I think I think it, <clears throat> I think it's kind of like the whole story is that there weren't very many of me I mean women who played guitar and I didn't really realize that I just was me but when I think back I can remember I didn't have anybody to look at I didn't we didn't have social media MTV kind of came along right when I was learning it but I remember it was literally like the runaways. I remember the first time I saw Lita Ford, I was like, oh, oh, we're, oh, that's why everybody thinks this is so cool. We're, mm. we're women doing, like we play, play guitar. We aren't just like women, you know, uh, like not that acoustic guitar is bad because then what do I do? I see Nancy Wilson play and I, I just, I go crazy. I'm like, I didn't even know she played. Like because wow. we didn't have videos, we didn't see social media, so <clears throat> everything kind of changed. And I think she was looking for a real guitar player, like a female. So how many of those are you going to run around in clubs and see? Not a lot. So yeah, I so I just got the job by default in a way. Well, you talked about moving down here and how it was tough. The LA was a tough town, and that was kind of when you first had the realization of the whole boys' club thing. Tell me about what that experience was like. What was challenging? Well, uh, it was actually in the graces. It was a great lesson, and it's. I think. Funny, I was going to say this in my speech, but I'm just going to say it now instead. That'll give me more things to say later. Um, it was in the graces that I really got the hit um, when I walked in to do the recording for the album. And I, there were some very famous guitar players that I knew from uh, the China Club. We'd go down there and jam and stuff. Um, that really dates me. Oh, I and know so, the China Club. I'm an LA native, so I'm aware. Oh, okay. It was so, a cool place, cool place. And I used to go in there and jam, but I was, I was still, funny, I wasn't shy in the Northwest West, but when I got down to LA, I, there were, I mean, there are player, players there, you know? So I, I always kind of was like respectful and held back a little bit. And there were two players from China Club in there and like, hi guys, what are you doing here? And kind of excited to see them. They're like, well, we're here to play on the Graces record. And I'm like, wait, that's my record. And like, no, I'm the guitar player. And they're like, oh, wait. And we all just had that moment of like. They hired well, out. Uncomfortable. Ooh, wow. I mean, I remember going home that night and it was my first time. And this is what I'm going to say to people is go ahead, have your meltdown, feel bad. Then do what I do. I called one of the players who was a friend of mine. I said, what do, what do I do? Like, this is incredible. Like, I feel so crappy right now. I, I, he said, come up. So we got together. He goes, oh, I get it. I'm playing your parts. Like, how is this even happening? Or you should be playing this part. So we kind of worked it out. We went into the studio together and we set up. And by the time they came in, they're like, oh, you both are in the studio together. And we're like, and we're going to play together. That's awesome. And I think when you get over that initial hump and you don't, you have some support. Well, the end of the story goes when we were on stage, even with a broken leg, I broke my leg somehow. I can't even remember. Oh, car wreck. And we're playing and comes time to finally solo. The managers are there, the producers, the, everybody's there. I just walk to the front of the stage. I'm thinking, oh my God, okay. And I just do it. And it was all over with. Like the managers and the producers came up and said, I, we're so sorry. We didn't even know. <laughs> that's good. I mean, I'm glad I had a happy ending, but yeah, that's kind of, that's a pretty crappy thing. To have and that's happen. the way, you know, that's the way it goes. You know, that's the way it goes. And that's what I want to say to people is feel bad, get up, make the calls. And when you have that window, jump in because I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, it's always going to be that way where you have to like, you do have to prove yourself and you have to be good. And so, you know, if you think you don't have to keep working at it, you'll always have to work at it. 
Awesome. So like, obviously a lot of, we mentioned that the anniversary of bitch is coming up. So after the graces, when bitch came out, it did seem to come out of nowhere. It did seem to be like an overnight success story. It was all over MTV. It was all over the radio. And obviously it still resonates today. What do you think it is that resonates about that song a quarter century later? Sorry, I'm going to take a drink. Uh, yep. Oh, well, <clears throat> I, it's, I guess it, the message is, I mean, women then were women now I mean and I I think it's it's an evergreen message it's empowering for for women and for every generation I just had my newest favorite person uh, I always find a fan or two that are playing it right she's six years old oh, and that's she has amazing. red guitar she has flaming red hair awesome. and I I I texted her mom I said can I post this? I'm, I should get to it today or tomorrow at the latest. Six years old. And her mom says, yeah, she's been, she, I said, does she sing too? And she's like, oh yeah, she knows all the words. She's been hearing me sing it forever. Now here's the difference. <clears throat> it used to be, I was only allowed to say this word when my mom was singing it. And I'd sing it loud in the back of the car with her. Now we have a six-year-old playing. I mean, this is mind boggling to me. I'm, I'm like, well, what I are singing so the cool. song and she's six and she gets it. Well, what I love is how obviously that word, you know, is a loaded word. And it was sh kind of shocking at the time. I imagine there were some radio stations that wouldn't even play it at the time, but it became a hit anyway. But what I loved about one of the one of the things I loved about bitch was sort of reclaiming the power of that word. Not totally unlike when, you know, people in the LGBTQ plus community, like the word queer used to be a slur. Now people call themselves queer and they call them proudly. That's a term now. That's a proud word that became reclaimed. Yeah. And, you know, being able to say I'm a bitch because I'm, you know, any woman with a strong personality, you, me, everyone has a story about how, like when they were assertive, maybe even the story you were telling about the, the Grace's studio situation where you were called a bitch or called difficult or aggressive or, you know, some variation of that just because you were like, you know, not a wuss basically. So tell me about like, you know, how reclaiming the word bitch and turning into like kind of a badge of honor was important to you or important to the success of this song. Well, I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, self work <laughs> at the time and was deep into Jungian theory. And so it was, a lot of shadow self work and shadow work. And I loved, I loved it. It made so much sense to me. <clears throat> so bitch, just all of a sudden I, I got it. It was like, oh, oh, this is just a part of us. And, and not only that, what people are using the word bitch for is, is really, it's like, it's like the F bomb, you know, it's like, that's kind of one of my power words I found out. It kind of gives me like, you know, it's like a, it's like a power up in a video game, you know, it's like, that's kind of what it does for me sometimes. And, and bitch can be so, like how I can use myself in more of a powerful way. It doesn't, I guess I said it best, you know, in an old interview, I saw it the other day. I was like, Oh, that's funny. I use semantic realignment with it. So you can make it really anything you want. A bit, bitch can mean whatever you want it to mean. But if we use the old idea, <clears throat> it's just a part of a very large part of us. We're very, I think it's a balance, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to quote myself, but the bitch lover, child, mother, all that at the time, it's like, if we don't integrate all of those parts of us, we cannot be whole people. And if we allow people to box us into you're this or you're that, then they're boxing us in and we can't be whole people in front of, to their eyes either. So that, that's why I guess when Shelly and I wrote the song, I was like, I think she might've had a different idea, but, but when we kind of got to it, I think we both were just mind melded, like totally got it. And it was like, this is for everybody, not just women, by the way. I never felt it was just for women. Maybe it was a little bit of a, of a relief for a lot of men to understand, oh, that's what's going on, <laughs> you know? But a lot of men feel it's the same for them. You know, it's not like I'm not just one way either. A lot, I get a lot of letters. And I'm pretty sure that Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth was inspired by this song when she wrote the song Female Mechanic on Duty. I've read that. So I just cool fun read fact. that. Yeah, very cool fun like, fact. 
So I actually want to ask, I know we're running out of time, but, you know, we're talking about how, you know, this song exploded in the mid nineties. And it was a time that I look back on the nineties, the mid nineties as a really exciting and healthy time for as cliched as all the headlines where it said women rock, people were writing about women rock. Obviously the affair was happening. There were like a lot of co-ed bands like, you know, Hole and Sonic Youth, who I just mentioned and No Doubt and Veruca Salt and there was the riot girl thing happening yeah. and it's, it was a good time. It was a tipping point. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> I mean, it, I think it opened <clears throat> doors, but I think the doors that you and your peers kicked open, it opened doors, but then in some ways, I think things regressed a little bit. I didn't, it, do, do you feel the same way? Maybe you don't feel that way. Um, how, how so do you think that at first, let me ask you that. Because it just seemed like there were, I mean, it could actually be symptomatic the fact that rock music kind of went out of vogue. Because I feel like in the mid nineties, there was a lot of rock bands and some of them had women and then the, you know, whatever, the breeders, the pixies, garbage, whatever. Yeah, and then hello, we need that. Yeah. Uh, and I just feel like after, <clears throat> after a while, the only women that were kind of on MTV anymore, and I'm not dissing them um, talent wise, or it went to more of a pop thing. It went to like the Spice Girls, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera. Well, and then I don't yeah. think. Yeah, I just, and then rap, and then now, I mean, rap pretty much dominates, and that's kind of like that. And then we have your Taylor Swifts, and we have you, we have like the most eclectic music ever, which that's true. I'm way into because it was, it was, I, I have a catalog of songs you would not even believe still that are recorded and ready to go, but I, I go all across the board on my, on my songs. And so I personally love that it's a lot of things. Okay. So when you said that, I, I, I was like, wait, what does she mean by that? Okay. <clears throat> because yes, I agree. But I think where's the, where's the rock? That's where's true. the indie rock? Where's the cool, like Lizzie Hale, for example, she's awesome, by the way. <clears throat> I, I can't wait to meet her because I think she's so I, rad. I, I want more of that, mm-hmm. you know, the evanescence where's, where's more of that. <clears throat> so but then you have like an artist that I work with, um, uh, Haley Johnson. And what you're seeing now that I never saw before, she just opened up for K- KT Tunzel on a tour. Or when I, was wor- when I was on tour with Melissa Etheridge. Or now Melissa and uh, Brandy and um, KT Tunzel, they're all doing a show on fantasy, not fantasy. <laughs> fantasy Springs. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and you never would have seen that just That's matter true. of fact we're all getting together so there's there is that change there where this is now common where you see female artists playing together a lot it's not it's not oh this is wow that's unusual it's mm-hmm. not okay unusual. so perhaps i'm being pessimistic by thinking that things regress i just feel like you know it seemed like for a while like i remember one year in the grammys like all of the album of the year nominees were women it was lauren hill garbage i think cheryl crow um it was the year that lauren hill won but like every nominee was was a woman i think madonna's ray of light was up that year and you know and and then and then the um 97 or 90 okay i'm really bad it was the year (laughs) so me paula cole sarah mclaughlin jewel um i know i'm forgetting somebody important in there um but yeah that it it was all women alanis of course except for poor uh, not not that year it was all the lilithers <laughs> the lilithers except for um dylan not bob but yeah i Jacob. believe that was 98 that was the soy bomb year but yeah that was a year sean colvin i believe won. sean colvin old Love. dirty bastard yeah, came yeah. up and yeah it was a fun time but uh it in terms insane. of yeah. do you think things are easier or harder for women now than when you first came up when you first came to la and were trying to grind I'm going to say easier, but that's because I look at, I mean, I, I looked at the Grammys this year and I look at everything that's happening. I see all the women that are charting all the time and, you know, able to do what they're doing. And I think, wow, different, different world. I mean, I look at, you know, Billy and Ariana Grande and just, you know, all, all the different, not to say, I mean, even when uh, Taylor Swift was first coming out, I think it was even way harder than at the mm-hmm. beginning, but each person that gets through that door, I always say, as long as we keep our foot in it and we keep handing that baton, you know, to, to the next, to the next group, to the next group, 
I, I think it's really important. It's like Melissa bringing me on with her was just an extension of Lil Affair. And every, I pray everybody continues to do that. And the more I see all these combo um, duets and things like this going on in the music industry now, like all these people singing together and doing all sorts of, I think that's incredible. I just felt like, gosh, you know, when Queen Latifah and I did, I was thinking, well, aren't we rare? Why aren't there more of this going on? But now it's like, uh, always, all the time. I'm going to do one too, but I'm not going to tell you who because I don't know yet. Uh, we'll have to it's watch this. Know. Watch this space. I'm excited for that. You mentioned at the top of this interview how there weren't people like you when you were starting out, and you, you know, you had Lita Ford and Nancy Wilson, and you looked to them, but that Good was morning. about it. Are, have you? Do you have any stories as we wrap up about you know younger artists who have, um, you know, told you that hearing bitch or, or hearing blurring the edges or discovering you in the nineties when they were kids. Um, like you were there, Lita Ford or, or there, Nancy Wilson. No, um, not right off the top of my head. Well, you know, it's the case. It has to be the case. It, it is the case. And I've had, I've, I've worked with a few people. Um, I don't have any guitar players, but I've worked with I've worked with a lot of the singers already that that looked up to me because their managers got a hold of me or their labels immediately and I was kind of that person everybody got sent to me before they made it um but I did just recently um have somebody that was um that was working with us on the whole bitch anniversary and she was going through videos and things like this and we got to the guitar player magazine cover and she's like she she saw the video shoot for the cover and she was like that and I was like what she's like that people want that and I'm like why and she's like oh my god because she is a really amazing guitar player and she picked up the guitar and she was playing I'm like holy my god like oh my god there's like women that play like like that and she's like she's like you don't know what that was like for us she has a whole group of them she's from Australia and she says there's a, there's a ton of us and there's a whole group of us. There's like 20 of my friends and we all play like this. And when we saw that, everything changed. Hmm. I, I kind of started crying. That's so cool. No one has ever said that to me before. And I was like, wow. Oh, I'm it so happy. Really cool. I mean, super that cool. somebody would, would tell me that to, and I was sitting next to her and I was like, okay, you can have it. Take that if you want. <laughs> That's why you're a trailblazer, Meredith. And that's why you're getting this award at the She Rocks Awards on June 2nd. And um, congratulations. So deserving. And Thank I'm you. looking forward to celebrating with you in person on June it's 2nd. Gonna be fun. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have okay. a Thank good you. time. Toast to you. Thanks. Thanks.